Hello there guys, today I'm going to be explaining parameters and how they work. So first, I'm just going to open a little test command here. This isn't necessary and you don't have to do this. This is just for me to show you how to or how parameters work and how you can use them. So first, I'm going to do the check parameters. This is going to be the action, check parameters. And if the number of uh, parameters is equal to 2, we're going to say continue actions, and if it's not, we're going to jump to a different one. So let's say this is two parameters. Sorry for my horrible spelling. And then we're going to end action sequence. And then send another c message that says this was less than two, and the command failed. So now if we control S and save our bot and control R and run it, I'll show you how this test command works entirely. Now one parameter is basically test and hey. So this first word is a parameter. Separated by a space, this would be parameter number two, SDF. Now say you want multiple parameters. If you check them by multiple, there would be however many words would be one set of parameters. So if this was multiple parameter, multiple parameters, both of these would be one parameter. But if I test this command, this will work and say this has two parameters because that's one parameter and that's another one. Now if I do test and said, hey, this is not going to work. Oh, no, it's obviously not going to work because I forgot to add the jump to action 4. But let's just pretend that the bot said this was less than 2. Now, how can we incorporate this into checking anything else? Most likely, the things you can really do with this are not as much as limited but this is very useful if you would like to have a command that says like test yes you can check for the parameter number one is equal to a variable and that variable could be yes if it is equal to yes it will send them to a page and if it's no it'll send them to another page so they're quite useful in the sense of making custom and cooler commands now I'm going to show you exactly how these parameters work. We're going to store the command parameters. And we're going to store parameter number one, which is parameter dot one. Now we're going to store parameter number two. Parameter number two, parameter number two. Now, and this has two parameters. I'm going to show you what parameter number one looks like and what parameter number two looks like. So I'm pressing Control S to save and Control R to run. And when the bot comes online, hopefully it won't be f too long. There it is. So if I do test, it'll say this has two parameters. Now see, notice how this did not work. Actually, I don't know why it did that. Never mind. No, I do. I messed up on this we have it jump to action number four. Action number four is our send variable, and since the variables were not defined, it said undefined. We're going to switch the action to jump to six. Now I'm going to press Control S to save and Control R to run, and now we're going to do the command again. So if I type just test, it'll say this has less than two parameters, as seen there. Now if I type test hey and you, it'll say hey you. This is parameter number one, and this is parameter number two. Now multiple parameters. This will store reasons for a warning system per se. So let's say I want to do a warning system. So let's change this to warn. And we're going to store parameter number one. Store command parameters and it's going to be parameter number one and this is going to be the user's dot name. All right. So parameter number one is the user's name. So we're going to do warn at user and then the reason. 
So now we're going to store parameter number two. This is going to start from parameter number two, and it's going to be multiple parameters, and it's going to be warn dot reason. Now, I did a little tutorial, not necessarily on member data, but using it. So right now we're going to control member data, and we're going to just do it to the mentioned user, but we're not really going to put mentioned user. We're going to put uh, user's name. This is going to be warrants. We're going to set add the value of one. So now, if this entirely works, it's going to add the member data of one, and then it's going to end the action sequence. So now that we have all our store parameters and everything working, the first one being the user's name, the second one being the user's reason of the warning, now we have to send the successful message that says, hey, they were warned, you know. So after the command is gone, it says, you have warned, then it's going to put the member's name, for, and then the reason. I like bolding the reason, so, so the reason. Then we finish our asterisks, two asterisks to bold. And there's that. It's going to change the warnings to number, to plus one. So, let's say you want to create a check warns command. Now we're going to just store member data. And I think the name is warns. And it's going to be of the command author. It's going to be warning amount. Now it's just going to send the message. Oop. Now we're going to send a message of you have warning amount. Okay. So now we're going to press Control S and Control R. Control S to save. Control R to run. Now using this, as seen here. We're going to warn somebody, so I'm going to warn myself, and I'm going to say this user is cool. Alrighty, totally forgot that we have the store command parameters. And it's just not doing anything afterwards. So we're going to jump to action. Sorry about that, guys jump to action you can do this just by continuing I like jumping I don't know why I just do it so now we're gonna send an error message if they didn't meet the you know the parameters so it said this was a fail failed attempt now at the top here we're gonna add a check parameters we're gonna check to see if it's equal to our parameters are greater than one. Basically, or greater than two, basically. But if it's not, we're just going to skip actions. There's a series of checks you can do to make it check to see if it's actually all correct. I'm not going to go through the trouble of doing all that. But now that that's finished, our, we're going to add our jump to action six. So now if I warn myself now by doing control S by saving, control R, for running, if I do warn, at valid, and then a reason, saying this is a test because this user is cool. And then it says you have warned valid, which is the first parameter. That's our username. And then this is one multiple parameter. For this is the test because the user is cool. So now if I do check warns, where I added that control member data, it'll tell me that I have zero warnings for some reason very odd reason <laughs> ignore that boys control member data it's gonna add the value of one alright I don't really necessarily know why that's not working it should work in any other scenario I'm probably doing something wrong. I'm too tired to make out what it is. But that's 
a very quick tutorial on parameters, how you can use them and incorporate them into commands. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you would like any suggestions on what we should do in the future or what else we should do, please just send me a message on the DBM network or in the YouTube comments. Thank you and have a nice day.